Good morning, Year 12, and welcome back to McGrathematics for your next statistics lesson. As always, we'll start with a revision question. This one's from the 2018 VCE, which is the Victorian final exam. Uh, and it's a probability question. Two events, A and B, are independent. That is important. Where the probability of B is equal to two times the probability of A. And the probability of A union B is 0.52. Given that, probability of A is equal to, and you've got five options. Now, this is actually quite a challenging question. And if you're able to do this without flicking back to your year 11 notes, you are smarter than me. Because that's what I had to do. I had to look up. Uh, my union formulas, my independence, and what's important to know with this question is that the probability of A union B is found with this formula. Okay, probability, the way I have to make sense of it is the probability of A or B is probability of A plus probability of B, but then you take away the overlap of A and B because you just counted it twice. Okay, so uh, normally in like year 9 and 10, you look at mutually exclusive events where A and B can't happen at the same time. So probability of A or B is usually just A plus B. But in this case, we can't assume that. We have to take away the overlap in our Venn diagram essentially. All right, so here's the formula. Now, probability of A union B we have is 0.52. So I'm going to sub that in. And now we can use the fact that because A and B are independent, if you found the probability of A intersection B, which in my mind is probability of A and B both happening, you do the product. You do probability of A times probability of B. Okay. Now you can only do that for independent events. And remember, independent events are events which don't affect each other's outcome. Okay. Rolling a die and flipping a coin are independent because they don't affect each other. All right. So if you made it this far, there's still some work to do because now we're going to change. Um, we're going to write probability of B as two times probability A. So we're going to change this to 2PA. We're going to change this to 2PA. So you get 2PA squared. Pretty hectic. All right, so now if we collect this all on one side, we bring the minus 2 probability of A squared across to make positive. Uh, the 3 probability of A here gets brought over and it's negative. And now we have to solve what is essentially a quadratic. It might not look like a quadratic, but if I change these probability of A's to X's, it's a bit more quadratic now. All right, it's not a very nice quadratic. We need to solve it using the quadratic formula is a good option. So if you apply the quadratic formula to this equation here, you get two answers. You get 1.3 and 0 0.2. Now, uh, obviously 1.3 cannot be a probability because that is above 100%. So in this case, the only logical outcome is 0 0.2, which is your answer, B. All right, so there's a lot going on there. You need to understand and recognize this formula. You need to know that independent events mean that the intersection is a product. And then you need to apply the information from the question and solve the quadratic. All right, so a really tough question. So bravo, Victoria. All right, for today's lesson, we are looking at measures of central tendency, which is really just a smug way of saying mean, median, and mode which is what we are kicking off with. So we have 25 shoppers were asked how many hours they spent panic buying in the last week. The results have been tabulated below for you. We have a number of hours. So the least that we had was one hour from five people. I'm happy to say that I lie in this category of one hour. All I've panic bought so far is a whiteboard and like six packets of Doritos, but I'm only human. And we have eight people who have panic bought for six hours. Okay, so outcomes and frequency. So if we were going to find the mean, which I'm hoping you remember from year 10, is the, it's kind of like the mathematical average. It's the sum of all the scores. That's what this Greek letter here, sigma, stands for. It's the sum of all the scores divided by how many scores there are. All right. So in this example, a column that you'll frequently see with a table like this is the FX column. Okay, that's FX, X for score, F for frequency, multiplied. Okay, because you think about if we were trying to add up all the scores in this data set, we'd be doing, well, there's uh, one five times, so we'll do one plus one plus one plus one plus one. Uh, there's six twos, so we're going to do two plus two plus two. That's very time consuming. It's obviously much more efficient to use multiplication. Okay, so one times five, two times six, three times three, etc. All right, so now we can just make it clear that we just need to add up these numbers. 
And the two numbers which are the magic key for this question is right here, the sum of the frequencies, which logically should be how many scores there are in total because you add these all up and we ask 25 people. And the FX, if you add up this column, you get the sum of all the scores, all right? You've got the, the five ones, the six twos, yada, 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 all together. All right, so if you have one of these tables and you're asked to find the mean, the shortcut is just, well, this is the total. This is the total scores. So I'll just do 88 divided by 25 and I get 3.52, piece of cake. All right, for now for the next one, I just wanna sort of quickly touch on how we handle grouped frequency tables. So with this, rather than having a different row for each score, we sort of tabulate them into groups to make it more efficient. Now this is more efficient because we only have five rows now instead of um, 44. However, if you were gonna find the, the mean of this data set, well, you don't really know what these scores are. So you don't really know what to multiply by three because this zero to eight, it could be three zeros, it could be three eights, it could be a zero, a four, and an eight. So we don't really know. So we have to get a little bit dodgy and do this. We need to take the class center. All right, so our class is from zero to eight. So for the purposes of calculation, we're just gonna treat that as a four. All right, from nine to 17, we'll take the midpoint of nine and 17, which is 13, and we'll just use that as our score. All right, not very exact, a little bit dodgy, but that's math sometimes, baby, get used to it. All right, we have our frequencies again, so we just do the frequency times the class centers as our scores for our FX column. And then once again, if we wanna find the mean, we just gotta do 559 divided by 25. All right, okay, moving on. Now for the next one, we have 25 shoppers. We're now asked, different question, how many crates of toilet paper they already have at home? All right, so this is topical stuff, guys. We have a minimum score of five, and there were three people who had 10 at home, which is very greedy, but I mean, people panic. So we are gonna find, for this data set, the median, which is the middle score. All right, the median should be the score that splits your data set into two equal halves, hopefully. So to know this, we really need to know how many scores there are so we can sort of find the midpoint. So a column that you might see on tables like these is the cumulative frequency column. Okay, we looked at cumulative frequency yesterday. It's basically just adding on as you go. So we started with three, now there's two more, now there's four more. So it's basically how many so far. Now the reason this is good is because the last number, 25, is how many shoppers there are, which we already knew, I spoiled it. Anyway, so if there are 25 shoppers, you've got to think what's a number, well what position is gonna split 25 in two halves, all right? So because 25 is an odd number, if you take out the 13th score, you'll get 12 on the left and you'll get 12 on the right. So that means that the 13th score is the one that's gonna be our median so we've got to say, well, where's the 13th score going to be? The first three are here, then the next two are here, so up to five, up to nine is in here, and then from nine to 16 is in here. So that logically must be where the 13th score is. All right. A simple trick if you want to find what position the median is, is you take the total and you add one and then you divide by two. So 25 plus one is 26, divided by two is 13, so we're looking for the 13th score. All right, hope it's pretty obvious to you that it's gonna be in this row here. So our median is gonna to have to be the score of eight. All right, just another example with median because they can get a bit tricky sometimes. Uh, separate survey, we asked six shoppers to name a number. We had three, seven, I think Ethan must have been shopping because we got 69, we got four, and I guess Lockie was shopping because we got negative five, and we have seven and we're trying to find the median of this number. So first thing you should know to do is, well, the median needs to be the middle when they're in order, and currently they're in just a random order. So first thing I'm gonna do is put them in ascending order from smallest to largest, all right? Now that we have this, we need to find the score which splits the data set into two, except that it's not really a score because if we pick the four here, there's two on the left and there's three on the right, so it hasn't split it. Same thing with seven, two on the right, three on the left, doesn't work. So in this case, when you have an even number of scores, the median is gonna be between the two middle scores, okay, the exact halfway point. So in this case, our median is right here, halfway between four and seven. If they're tricky numbers, you can add them together and divide them by two, 
You're basically taking the average of these two numbers. In this case, we get 4 plus 7 is 11, divided by 2 is 5.5. So 5.5 is the score that goes right in here, which splits our data set into two even halves. Okay, so when there's an odd number, you'll get one score in the middle. When there's an even number, you'll get two scores in the middle, and you take the average. All right, hopefully that is either familiar or making sense. Uh, one of the main reasons we looked at cumulative frequency histograms yesterday with our, our polygon, or we also call it an OGIVE, is that this line is really useful for estimating stuff like the median. Okay, so we're not really estimating, we're finding it. So here is a data set. The cumulative frequency goes up to 20, which means that the median is going to be around the 10th score. Well, it's not really because you're going to have 10 and then 10. It's going to be between the 10th and 11th, but... Uh, we can see here that the 10th and 11th scores are both going to hit in the 7. So either way, that's going to be our median. Okay, so cumulative frequency histograms are really easy for finding uh, things like the median. All right, now back to our 25 shoppers with our crates of toilet paper. I just want to touch very briefly on the mode, which again, hopefully you are familiar with. It's just the most common score, which means the score that occurred the most, aka highest frequency which in this case is clearly a frequency of seven, which corresponds to eight. And that's really it. All right, let's work through a few examples. This first one, we have a grouped frequency table. We wanna find the mean, the median, and the modal class. All right, so we'll start off with the mean, and I want you to think, what's the first thing I need to do to this table in order to find the mean? Thinking, thinking, thinking. All right, if you said to yourself, we actually need a score to calculate with because we can't really work with classes, you are right, we need a center. All right, so center of 0 and 4 is 2, 7, 12, you should see a pattern here. All right, so for the purposes of calculation, for the mean at least, we're going to use these as our data points essentially rather than these, these classes. Like we did before, we can do an FX column, which means the score multiplied by the frequency, 2, 3 is a 6, 7, 2 is a 14, etc. And now for our mean, we need to find the total of this column and the total of this column, and then we'll divide those two. So total frequency is total number of scores, and total of fx is going to be all your scores summed together. So for our mean, we just need to do 5, 6, 1, divided by 33, and there you have it. Nice, neat number of 17. All right, now we'll look at the median. So we'll keep our centers there for now. I'm not sure if we'll need them, but remember for the frequency, we're trying to find the middle score. If you want to, we can add a cumulative frequency column to make it a bit easier. As we see, we end up with 33 because that's what total number of scores. So now you've got to think, we have 33 scores. In what position is the median going to be? And if you want to, you can use that trick that I mentioned before. You can do the number of scores plus one divided by two. All right, so you get 34 divided by two is 17. So we are looking for the 17th score. So we've got three, five, 11, and then from 11, it goes to 19 here, which means that the from the 11th to the 19th scores are in this row here. All right, which must mean that our median is a score of 17 or a class of 15 to 19. In this case, we'll just say the score 17 which is kind of confusing because the 17th score is 17. That wasn't meant to happen, but all right. So our median is the same as the mean, which means our, our data set is pretty symmetric, usually what it means. All right, and the last one, very simple, modal class just means the one with the highest frequency. Uh, I'm sure you can see that that is the 20 to 24 range piece of cake. All right, for the next one, a little bit more of a challenging question. We have a data set, but I've left one of them so as an unknown value. I want you to find the median of this data set, given that the average, or sorry, not the average, the mean of the data set is 12. Pause the video, have a go if you want. Should be able to know how to do it, or should have, have, should have an idea how to start, hopefully. All right, so the information that the mean is equal to 12, that's what you're going to use to figure out what y is, okay? Because to find the median, we need to put these guys in order, but we can't order them until we know what y is, all right? So a mean of 12 tells us that if I did these six numbers, sum together, 
divided by 6, I would get a 12 as my answer. Okay, that's what the mean is. It's the sum of the scores divided by how many there are. So what we've got here is essentially a pretty easy equation. We can solve for y. We can multiply that 6 across to get 72. Summing these uh, numbers all together, we get 67. And so then just by looking at this, we can see y needs to be 5. All right, cool. So now we can change this y to a 5. And now we can put these uh, scores in order from smallest to largest. And now we can find the median. All right. It's, again, we've got six scores. So there's not going to be one middle. We've got two middles. And we've got to go the average of these two, which I'm sure you can see is 11.5 as our median. All right. Now the last one for today. We have Jai has already completed four exams. His average result is 68%. What result does he need to achieve in his fifth and final exam so this average is above 70%? So this is some university level maths. Not that it's taught at university, but this is the kind of thing you'll be doing at uni when you're four exams down and you just want to know if I can cruise through the last one or if I have to study. Okay? So we have four exams giving us a result of 68% as an average. So let's just let uh, x1, x2, x3, and x4 be Jai's four exams already completed. We know that if we added up those four scores and divided by four, we would get the mean of 68. All right? So we really, well, we kind of need to know what x1, x2, and x3, and x4 are. Except that you don't because we already know what they're going to add together because they could be, I mean, they could be 0, 0. Well, no, they could be 0, sorry. We don't really know what they are, but we know that what they're going to add up to is four lots of 68. Okay, that's what average means. It's going to be averaged out as 68. Okay, because if you had if you had two less than 68 here, two less than 68 here, you have to have two more and two more here for it to average out. So it doesn't really matter what these scores are. We know they should add up to 468. Okay. So if we know that, now that we need our new average, which is the four previous scores plus the new one, divided by 5, that needs to be greater than 70. Okay, so again, if we've got this far, we just have a pretty basic equation to solve as per usual. We can multiply the 5 across to get uh, 350. We can add the 468 to get 272. And now we just subtract 272 from both sides and we get 78. All right, so from this, we can see that if, uh, if Joy gets over 78 for his last exam, his average will be over 70%. So that is your goal, Joy, 78%. You can do it. That's a distinction. All right, that'll do it for today. Um, thanks very much for watching. You can have a go at some of the uh, questions in 903. Again, they are a bit repetitive, so I will just say do a variety, try and touch every kind of concept is my recommendation. And if you have any questions, send me an email. Thanks very much. I'll see you next time.